that was very inspiring. I want to take up accessibility. Uh, so yeah, so the subtitle is, uh, so uh, your site is inaccessible and it's your fault and you should feel bad. Um, if you've ever looked on the internet uh, and you're like, oh, I want to improve the accessibility of my site, um, you usually come across uh, someone very angry at you because um, you didn't try hard enough and you failed. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, so accessibility, uh, it's good, you should do it, but yeah, you feel really guilty when you, you're just like, oh, but do I really need that old tag? Like, yes, you do. You do need it, but um, there's a few issues, I guess, um, specifically with accessibility in context of React. Uh, so for context, uh, with the new Create Context API, uh, we uh, sort of, with accessibility, it's, it's one thing to actually uh, take, take uh, resources from uh, uh, another site, really small scale sort of app web pages, web pages, documents. And if it's just adding an alt tag, it's not really, my, I can do that, it's quite simple. Um, but then what if you have a CMS? Uh, now you have a uh, question of scale and how, you, how do you get people on board? And there's a technical challenge with the scale of accessibility now. Um, Facebook uses machine learning to sort of generate the alt tags. And so something, something so innocuous as this simple attribute that you should add suddenly becomes infinitely more complex when you do it at scale. And I think the same is with accessibility. Uh, and for context, is get, again, um, I'm not an accessibility expert, so don't sort of, I don't know, try and hire me as one. <laughs> That's not a good use of your money. But uh, hire a real expert. But also, uh, I wanted to cover accessibility in context of React, uh, not just web pages in general. So, and whilst I'm not going to cover sort of accessibility sort of so broadly, uh, I wanted to go over sort of some basic concepts. So um, if you haven't heard of it, there's the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, uh, or WCAG. Uh, and they provide a couple of sort of guidelines. So it's, there's uh, government mandated sort of like a, that you be level A compliant, if you've ever heard that. So that just means you have to meet a certain set of requirements. Um, and then there's double A, which is a little bit harder to get. And then there's AAA above that, which is like accessibility, like Nirvana, like um, kind of hard to achieve that. But yeah, so, and there's a few basic principles, uh, perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. Uh, and I won't go through all of them. Uh, they're sort of, there's so many different sort of uh, components to each of these. So perceivable is just sort of what we see on the screen. Um, an important uh, thing is text alternatives. Uh, text is considered actually the most accessible of the mediums compared to say an image um, because text uh, can be read but it also can be read aloud and uh, it's machine passable and you sort of want to optimize for text. Um, Time-based media is sort of comes into this a bit sort of just like is there enough time, there's video, uh, audio, uh, specifically uh, with, uh, with React. Uh, this is not really sort of a problem, th this sort of characteristic, so we can just ignore perceivable, um, except for adaptable. So this is, uh, refers to the hierarchy of your page. So you have uh, information and relationships and as, as well as a meaningful sequence. Uh, so in the context of React, uh, info and relationships. So this is how does one component sort of relate to another component? And this is one of those things where as you scale uh, and you're sort of building sort of these components in isolation that work really great in isolation, when you bring them all together, it uh, becomes more complicated. As well as a meaningful sequence, uh, you might not know where your component actually uh, exists. So this is sort of something to keep in mind, so sort of just this adaptable part of your components. Uh, operable, um, one of the 
key things is you should not cause seizures. Uh, you cannot operate a computer if you have a seizure. Just something to keep in mind that's in the WCAG, yeah. Um, uh, keyboard accessibility is also very important. That's one of the big things that I think people the first realize is when they tab through and they can't. Uh, yeah, but uh, other than that, uh, navigating as well, we'll find out uh, issues with sort of focus and just navigating in general throughout a page. Um, and this isn't, I think, too specific to React, but I find it a lot in React uh, applications. It's just uh, one of the key things you should not uh, trap sort of the key. So the person that's navigating should always be able to sort of to navigate in and out by the keyboard. Uh, now, this is sort of a big sort of section, the operable and navigable uh, section is page title. Is it one of those things that's innocuous but, uh, and so simple on a document-based page? So you just put a, doc you put a title tag and then you're done. But as soon as you're using React and sort of rendering this on the client and you're updating uh, your pages, uh, the title just gets uh, forgotten about. Uh, and one of those things that's, yeah, just suddenly uh, sort of is made more complex, I, I feel, with single page apps in general compared to just your standard document. Uh, focus order as well. Uh, just an issue when you're working with virtual DOM is sort of like your reference, you have focus on an element that just no longer exists. Uh, and where does that sit in the context of other elements? Uh, link purpose, again, is this issue of context. So uh, where is your link? Uh, does it have uh, the visual information? If it uses just visual information for context, then you're just, um, that means that outside of that context, which is, say, a screen reader, now it doesn't make sense. Uh, a common example is read more. And you'll see that everywhere, read more. but. Uh, what does that actually mean? If you're navigating by a screen reader, uh, read more what? So, and that's, again, the big thing that I've found all throughout this is context. Um, we're really great at creating components, but at the end of the day, we are building these applications. They all have to sort of interact with each other, and that's, that's the hard part that comes around with it. Um, uh, headings and labels is, innocuous uh, sort of H1 to H6, but um, where does your H2 go? Where does your H3 go? Uh, and just uh, location. Um, this is just the actually where an individual is in the context of your app. Uh, that's hard to, hard to sort of determine when you're not, say, uh, just server-side rendering sort of a page, and you know that user is on that page at any one moment. Uh, understandable, uh, readable, predictable, um, and if it has input assistance. Uh, this is something where React really actually helps out, I think, with uh, the predictability. Uh, so if you're building a lot of components, then they're expected to work in the same way. Uh, input assistance, again, same thing. Uh, we can sort of build components that sort of consolidate the accessibility principles. Uh, the readable part is interesting. Uh, so uh, there's the lang attribute of any sort of uh, the, your HTML page and individual components. And components, React's really good at components. Uh, but in the context of a page, uh, it gets a bit more difficult. Uh, robust is the final thing. It's parsing, so this is quite simple uh, in terms of just uh, React generates uh, your different elements but it does not, uh, but uh, one thing that you need to be uh, sort of HTML uh, compliant is uh, making sure you have unique IDs, for example. In the context of a greater app, that's suddenly really difficult. Something that's super simple that you can uh, identify on just a page is suddenly sort of, how do you keep track of that? Uh, as for name and role and value, this is when you're actually creating your, your own type of button and your own type of uh, other thing that's building up, say, a span that doesn't have the semantic information that a normal HTML button has. So uh, 
if you're using components that are already are built by a browser, then you're good to go, but we have to start considering what is the role of this sort of new div that I want to be a button. So the first thing, we'll go into page title. And I think this is the first thing that people encounter is, how do I update my title? Uh, and it's super simple, just use the title element. Like, easy. Uh, except how do you, where, what is the concept of a page now? Where, where do you say, this is the title of my new page? And by the way, this is level A. So this is like, like you got to hit A. Like, if you're not hitting A, you just, it's a, it's a bit sad. So the simplest way of sort of adjusting sort of your title is say if you uh, just have a component and you just, when the component mounts, you set the document title to be foo. Uh, that's, that's it on the very super simple scale. And say if you've got routes uh, with pages, uh, so it might make sense for you to have the pages and these are your routes. And again, all it does is just set on your mount, uh, set a title. Uh, and that's super simple, but what about if you want to render on the server? What if you want to do something else? Just if you want to set uh, anything besides uh, within the limited context of this, um, you might want to try, say, a React document title. Uh, so that just allows, that gives you primitives. Uh, they have a thing called Rewind that allows you to run that on the server. So now your document title sort of is in sync between your server and your client. And you can update that, and that just gives a user some context to the page. Um, language of the page is something interesting. So if you have a site that's just in English, and it is for the lifetime of your app, then you probably don't have to worry about this. But say if you have a, a client site where actually this page is now a different language. Uh, in the same way, we can set a component did mount. So when you are updating languages, uh, we can set on the HTML element uh, a new attribute. Uh, but this is a bit more like it's out of scope for the document title. Uh, React Helmet is great for that. Uh, it allows you to set class names on the body, on uh, your HTML element, uh, any sort of meta tags as well. So this is like sort of the next level. If you want to go, if you're looking into SEO optimization as well, you want to you set all your attributes and meta tags uh, via React Helmet. And then that's it for like HTML and your title. And then that's. That's done. That was level, that was A. That's that's all right. Uh, section headings is uh, to correctly label sort of all your headings. It's actually like kind of kind of hard. Triple uh, A, so the nirvana of of accessibility. Uh, why why is that? I I think it is something really innocuous again that just. H1, H2, it's, it's quite simple, but what about in the context of an application? What about in the context of your site? Um, there's sort of a common misnomer that there's a thing called the document outline algorithm, which sort of, it technically was in that it was in, in specification, and the idea is that you have nested sort of heading levels. So if I have a section that has an H1 and then it has a nested section, now I have a, and I included an H1 in there, now I have a, I didn't have to do anything, it was implicit. Um, which sounds great, like that solves our problem for us, but no browser ever implemented it, so it, so it doesn't exist, so we have to sort of do it ourselves, which requires context, uh, which is really hard. Uh, so I've done this sort of pattern quite a bit, just a heading, um, and I manually sort of set a, a level and then generate uh, a, a tag based on that. Uh, it's, it's okay, it sort of gets the job done, but it's still like quite manual. It's, um, the, the, there's still a lot of room for human error. Um, and what about what you have like, say if you want my, if I want my level to be two, but then I want it to visually be a three, like there's, 
Oh, what do I do? Uh, this is a really great article, which I didn't actually expect to cover React at all. Uh, Managing heading levels in design systems. This is by Hayden Pickering. Uh, he's got a great book, uh, Inclusive uh, Components. And he sort of describes uh, a different way of sort of approaching this uh, issue of sort of nested context. So rather than sort of dynamically sort of generating the H2, the heading level element tag, uh, what we've done is he, he suggests instead is using ARIA level to uh, set the level. Um, and this is the same API. Uh, it sets the H2 so as a fallback for those with outer label. So we're sort of, it's getting a bit better, but we've got H2s everywhere. But, and the idea is that you could then, uh, anything could theoretically take a level. So uh, if I have multiple level, if I, my card has a level, then that can be passed down. And then if, if, I don't know about you guys, but there's the whole drilling props down issue that you'll eventually encounter. So we're sort of gone up a bit, but there's still lots of room for human error. It's still a lot of work sort of just to sort of work with. Um, and this requires context, which is actually there's a really great new API, React uh, context, which is no longer so experimental. Um, and it, this is also covered in the article uh, by Hayden Pickering. And so the idea is that instead of sort of this manual sort of like dealing with headings, what you can do is actually set a, a context for your heading level. So now you have a, uh, if you, so you would start with a context. So create context uh, with two, that would be your default uh, heading level. Uh, by the way, it's not one just because you would only really only have one H1 on a page. So two is sort of like a reasonable default. Now, if you have a section that then uh, sort of can set a new level, if you have a nested component, it can go, okay, what's my current level? Uh, actually, I want to like increment that. And now my children uh, can also, and now if I have a, an H tag, which was, uh, has been sort of specced, uh, never sort of came into existence, but you can make your own H tag. And now uh, it's sort of done for you and it just, uh, it's a bit magical. And I think this is kind of a neat sort of way of sort of getting around uh, HTML uh, at, at scale. That I think this pattern could really sort of, sort of, I don't know, take off. I think, I haven't thought of things other than headings quite yet, but things that sort of increment as you go. Uh, keyboard trap. Uh, if you find that um, this is one of those things that like going from one page to another, uh, this is a really simple thing in documents. Uh, there's a full page refresh and you'll end up at the top of a new document whenever you navigate, which is not the case if your site is client rendered. Uh, so what we can do instead is say we have this idea of a page, it is a page component, but in, so when it does mount we can go uh, focus on page and then this uses a React ref, so ref is a reference to a, the DOM element. And then once we have that we can go, uh, we can say when we uh, change routes we can actually go and explicitly set the focus on the page. So this just checks, is this location equal to the previous location? Uh, if, it's, if it's not, then we adjust the focus on the page. And that just, now we have, uh, oh, there's a missing tab index. Anyway, usually you have a tab index just to say that this is now like focusable. Uh, you say minus one and now you have and now it can be sort of navigated, even though it's not a link or a button. So yeah, so the, and this pattern uh, doesn't just apply to just a page. This can happen in anything. Say if you have a loading container, uh, you might want to set uh, your focus to be on the loading. So then it uh, is, they go, okay, it's loading. And then we go back to the actual component once it is loaded. Uh, passing. So this is quite, quite simple. Again, like React sort of gives us out of the box, like you can't really go 
make up your own tags generally. Um, but uh, nested according to their specifications. I think this is, so you, everyone sort of has a good idea that uh, an unordered list uh, takes uh, list items. Uh, this is all right. This is, and this, you can't put, don't put a, like a div in there. Crazy, like, no, you can't do that. But uh, say if you have a definition list, uh, this is, I haven't actually, I think I've used it like maybe twice in my career, to be honest, the definition list. But, but when you want to use it, uh, you actually can't, uh, according to the specification, you can't nest a definition list title and a, a definition list definition um, inside another component. It needs to be a direct descendant of the DL tag. But uh, with React for so long, uh, you had to have a div as the sort of root component. I mean, you could have any, com any that tag as that root component um, or even element, but there needed to be something there. Uh, in which case, uh, now the composability of our app is sort of like, uh, sort of uh, suffers a bit because then we have to sort of work around this limitation or what's more likely is people just wrap a div and now it's no longer technically correct. Uh, so we now have fragments, which is a cool new way of just adding this so we can just wrap instead. Uh, and now that's our, our, root our root tag, our root element, but we don't have to actually sort of put anything in the DOM. Uh, so it's, so yeah, it's just a nice uh, wrapper and now we can also, uh, there's a Babel transform as well, so you can just, uh, fragment was too many letters. This'll, you'll like this one. Uh, yeah, and so then the next one is, uh, any IDs are unique. Uh, so I mentioned earlier that this becomes really hard at scale, so how do you actually sort of deal with this? Uh, I find a common example is say something like an input, um, uh, you might have an ID um, and they sort of work together. I found, and this is a common example of like where you might want to generate an ID, but um, I always find that I always have an ID sort of generated from a server or something like that for forms. So less interesting, but I have found for something like icons. Uh, so with your icons, you want to actually label them, but uh, they should um, be, you use, ARIA labeled by and then reference an ID. But then if you have a conflict, if you use the same ID for everything now, you have, if you use that icon more than once in your page, then you're, it's no longer possible. So now, so I'm not sure if there's a better way of doing this. Uh, it seems like overkill, like to generate an ID in this way, but kind of works. And this is when you want like actually unique IDs. So, uh, yeah, and I think this is sort of one of the workarounds that we sort of come with in React. Uh, it's all right. I, I think we sort of got through, through that. Uh, bypass blocks. Uh, if you ever sort of go on a page, uh, it's very obvious to, to see where the main content is uh, if, if you're cited, but it's, it's less obvious when you're not, uh, and you'll have all the navigation and stuff that you have to go through. So you have to go through the title, and they're like, oh, this is, wow, this is my entire site map up here. Um, and you would have to hear every single thing. Um, so the alternative to that, or alternatively tab through, is you would provide something like a skip to main content link. Uh, if you're using React Router, which probably everyone is, um, you'll find that, so for example, you want to link to your main content um, and then you'll hide that from for your standard user, but make sure that it can be seen sort of when you focus on it. Um, the problem is, and I've found this, is that when using React Router for these links, it actually doesn't sort of move the focus correctly. So, so it's, you go on to that extra effort to link to the main content, but they're not actually at the main content. 
And this is one of the few times where you, I've sub substituted the link for an anchor tag. Uh, yeah, uh, it doesn't cause a, we don't hit our server because it's just an uh, ID on the page, but uh, yeah, that's a bit counterintuitive just to go from link to anchor. Uh, so name role and value is actually a notification. So if we want to have our components that we've built now. Uh, and a lot of time with the inbuilt buttons, uh, it's very easy, sort of the browser just does all the work. But if we're building our components, then we have to notify the user of any changes. So this might be something like we could have an announcements uh, component. And again, it might be hidden. Uh, we'll use ARIA Live, uh, Polite. So Polite is don't interrupt. Um, there's, you can have like a, basically just use Polite. The other ones are like really annoying. Like be like, as soon as you do anything, it'll be like, oh no, talk to me, talk to me. I've got something to say. Um, the problem with this though is that ARIA Live uh, needs to be, if you wanted to update this message, it would need to be already on the page. So it's a bit counterintuitive to working with uh, standard components and that you would render it, sort of, you generate, you would mount a component when, when you actually need to announce it. But this already needs to be on the page. So uh, one way of getting around that is uh, using portals, a new feature. Uh, You'll see them a lot of examples such as modals. Uh, this is a bit more straightforward. So basically the idea of a portal is you'd have a couple of IDs uh, rather than just your root. Now you have a, an announcements root. And so we've moved that it's outside of sort of our nice React component land, but it means that it's always on the page now. Uh, so we get around that issue. And then when we actually want to use it, uh, we would uh, do a, uh, we create the portal um, and then we can render a child and an element that we've created. And so when it does, when we want to get rid of the announcements, uh, we'll remove this div that we've uh, generated. Uh, and that's, that's basically, and that's how you would use it. So. Uh, it would obviously be a bit more dynamic, but yeah, so that's a brief overview of just sort of some of the things I found particularly sort of difficult to work with with React. They're really single page app specific issues. There's a couple of tools. So there are things like, yeah, you need to like add your old tags. Um, I hope everyone's using this. It's now in like Create React app by default. Uh, basically, it, it tells you about these little niggling things. And I found that this is, these are really like 90% of your problems is like your old tags, making sure you have the right ARIA props, you've got the correct roles. Um, and, and that can be automated. Uh, you don't really need to think about it. And now this is just your ESLint config, all nice. Um, and, that, and that will shout at you. Uh, another one is uh, React uh, accessibility. This is provided by the React JS team. Um, what it does is actually sort of overrides, sort of, it sort of, it sort of yeah, I think overrides mix in sort of thing of React DOM. So, um, and that just shouts at you uh, more aggressively. Um, in development, uh, if there are any issues. Uh, you can also hook this into uh, your testing framework uh, so you can uh, get errors sort of like whilst you're working on your site. And this is, this is more like for those non-React specific issues though. Th these are just application and document page issues that you'll come across building any, any web page. But now you can sort of automate it. Um, and to be honest, like if you address these issues, you're like a good 90% of the way there. So the biggest things I found, just to recap, is focus. Uh, focus is annoying in that it's somewhere else. Um, and context is just 
that's the thing that we struggle with the most is to build, at the end of the day, to build an accessible website, it needs to consider all the components in tandem, um, which is really hard when we're used to building components in isolation that work really nicely in this sort of, in this silo. Um, and only us as developers really know that context, unfortunately. Um, and there's cool tools like Context that <laughs> can help you out, but uh, I don't think we're anywhere close to sort of having like these drop-in sort of replacements be like, oh, everything's accessible now. Um, there's still a lot of work that we need to do sort of just to coordinate that all together. So yeah, thank you. Questions? Any questions? None at all. We all know oh, what um, oh. AAA accessibility is, and we're going to do it today? <laughs> tomorrow. 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 No, I mean, there's a.